Have you ever felt overwhelmed by the massive amount of information you're constantly bombarded with and are supposed to retain on a daily basis? You're not alone. Like most students, you've probably devised a complex system of folders within folders, different labels and tags to organize all the information you receive and need to access on a regular basis. But let's be honest, you probably have not opened some of those folders in a while and don't even remember creating them in the first place. The problem is your system is most probably fragmented and disconnected with several pieces of disjointed, scattered information that are not linked conceptually or in your mind, which renders it all useless. You need to be able to retain and utilize what you learn in a variety of contexts and to achieve different results over time. For that to happen, your outlook and your perspective on what and how you learn needs to be all-encompassing like a bird's eye view. You also need to be able to easily identify and access the pieces of data that you need at any given moment in order to edit, reuse and build on them. Sounds too idealistic and vague to do? Don't worry, that is exactly where systems thinking comes to the rescue. By understanding and utilizing systems thinking, you can achieve all that we talked about and more. When it comes to accessing, connecting and using knowledge, conventional wisdom often fails us with its common all or nothing approach to learning, which is rather counterproductive because it underestimates our true potential for learning. At the end of the day, it seems like you can be either a master of something or a jack of all trades and master of none if you are to follow that common belief system. But have you ever wondered how highly efficient modern day polymath such as Elon Musk learn, manage and apply their learnings on different topics on a daily basis and keep on thriving? You might think they are uniquely talented and that their talent is the main contributing factor to their success, but you are wrong. If you look at them more closely and analyze their methods, you'll realize that while Musk, for example, may be one of a kind, his skills are definitely not. Those skills can be learned and honed by anyone who is willing to put in the effort. And the best thing is that the results will last your lifetime way beyond your academic career. People like Musk are just using the right learning process and you can too. In fact, Musk is very good at a specific kind of learning called learning transfer that most people don't know about. At its core, a learning transfer simply means taking what you learn in one context and applying it in another. It requires a deeper awareness that is only achieved when we adopt a more comprehensive and holistic approach and change our outlook about how our minds truly function. This approach directly relates to system thinking, which is what this module is focused on. Developing a systems mindset is perhaps the single most important thing you can do in order to lay a meaningful foundation of knowledge, organize information, learn multiple subjects and apply that knowledge in all areas of your life in the best way possible. Having a systems mindset provides you with a knowledge management system to tackle not only your studies, but also your projects and your ideas in a wholesome, interactive way that will serve you for years to come. By the end of this module, you will have an understanding of what systems thinking is and how you can use it to your benefit. You will also be able to develop your own systems mindset by creating a structural approach to processing diverse inputs from multiple sources into a comprehensive system that only grows stronger over time. Developing your system will allow you to navigate the torrent of information that hits you on a daily basis. The first thing you have to shift in order to understand systems mindset is to change your linear thinking into circular. This is achieved when you realize that all things exist within a system and are all reliant on other elements for their existence and usefulness. Understanding this fact will help you learn exponentially better and solve even the most complex issues and problems. 
Let's take a page from Mr. Musk himself. He approaches learning anything, be it in physics, technology and every other subject in between, as a semantic tree. He suggests understanding the fundamental principles and getting the best possible grasp on the trunk material before moving off into the details of the branches and the leaves. When building your tree of knowledge, you always need to be mindful of the periphery versus the central. If you want to learn anything faster, you need to start with the materials that make up the trunk. It may be hard and slow at the onset, but without a sturdy trunk, you won't have the base to support what you're learning afterwards. This aspect is sometimes referred to as interconnectedness when discussing systems thinking. Another important aspect of systems thinking that you can also learn from Elon Musk is the importance of synthesis, which is essentially remembering and connecting. People like Musk never learn anything at random. They connect every tidbit of information back to a deeper, more solid base. When you are familiar with active recall and spaced repetition, as effective learning techniques, then with a systems mindset you can put what you learn through those techniques. Then your learning is embedded in a larger context and you can connect the dots across multiple subjects and platforms over time. Keith Holyoke, a UCLA professor of psychology, recommends people ask themselves the following two questions when it comes to dealing with new information. First, what does this remind me of? And second, why does it remind me of it? By constantly looking at objects in your environment and material you read and asking yourself these two questions, you build the muscles in your brain that help you make connections across traditional boundaries. Emergence is the coming together of many parts and elements within a system to produce certain results. New ideas bubble to the surface. It is an outcome of synergies between parts. In short, emergence occurs when you become certain that you have a good grasp on a concept because you have mastered all its building blocks, like different sections of a course module or a book. Balancing these loops will restore the system's equilibrium while reinforcing them through our automatic impulsive responses can be counterproductive. What this means on a practical level is simple. For your system's mindset to function properly, you need to adjust and calibrate different elements and for that you need feedback. You are already familiar with cause and effect, but what you probably don't know is that by understanding causality, you can distinguish between the different ways elements in a system affect each other. In systems thinking, understanding causality will help you navigate different subjects with different complexities with ease. You can then create unique outcomes by understanding deeper principles and mental models that connect different elements. Systems mapping is one of the key tools within systems thinking. Once you have a grasp of interrelatedness, emergence, feedback loops and causality, you can use a variety of methods to map out systems and arrive at efficient solutions and interventions to achieve better results. You can use mind mapping and mental models to navigate even the most obscure corners of the land of knowledge, chartered or unchartered territories. The Feynman method is one of the best techniques for getting useful feedback and bringing everything together within your knowledge management system. Simply put, the Feynman method consists of improving and deepening your understanding of a topic regardless of its complexity by teaching it to someone else, by explaining it in the most simple and plain way that you can think of, as if you were talking to a child. The Feynman technique is a very straightforward and simple yet highly effective technique for tackling any subject. The underlying idea is that if you are unable to explain something to someone with ease and in simple terms, your own understanding of that subject is probably faulty. By using the Feynman technique, you can easily identify gaps in your own understanding and fix them so that your knowledge tree can thrive. Being a somewhat abstract older technique, the Feynman method relies on physical notes. 
drawing and diagrams for explaining subjects, which is not the way most things are done these days. To remedy that, we're going to modernize a few things in this module by introducing a modified, improved version of the Feynman technique called the LPC method. LPC stands for Learn, Present, Critique. This technique is conceptually very similar to the Feynman technique, however, it is in its execution somewhat different because it allows you to use the modern technology to your benefit by using multimedia and incorporating multimodal learning into your process. This will effectively maximize your return on investment for all the time and effort you put into your learning. Here's how it's done. First, start learning. Go to lectures, take notes and take the time to understand the material as best as you can. Second, present what you've learned in front of your smartphone camera as if you were giving a lecture or explaining it to a friend. Use anything that you think is appropriate for the subject at hand, be it notes on a whiteboard or your body language to make your presentation wholesome and comprehensive. Be clear and be concise. Third, include that video in your notes and watch it with an open mind. Be your own harshest critic. Look for mistakes, omissions and vagueness. Go back to the original material and try to fix them as best as you can. See if you can find useful examples to improve not only your own grasp of the subject, but also that of your imaginary audience. Fourth, once you watch the video, you'll probably notice that certain areas and topics require more exploration. Go back to the original material or find additional sources to fill those gaps in your understanding. Record a new version of your video presentation or add your new findings to your notes. A few tips. First, put in the time and learn core concepts across fields and always relate those concepts back to our life and the world. Transferring between areas becomes much easier and faster. Second, study widely in many different fields. By doing that, you will build your reservoir of first principles. Over time, you'll be able to associate those first principles with different fields and applications and create unique skill sets for yourself that will last you well beyond your academic career. Remember, creating an atypical combination of skills that you're competent at will give you a considerable advantage on all fronts because most people focus on just one field. Third, chunk it up. Break down what you want to learn into manageable chunks. Learn each chunk so masterfully that you can form a picture in your mind and connect them into a bigger picture. Survey your concept, contents of a course or a book, for example, by scanning topics. Observe an example of the concept, watch a video on it, finally, try to do it yourself. This is a crucial part in consolidating your knowledge. Once you do that, you'll be ready to delve deeper and understand deeper principles and mental models that connect those fields. Fourth, remember learning is a process, not a product. Learning is not a project with a typical beginning, a middle and an end. It is a dynamic, lifelong process. You need to learn to enjoy this process. Want to become a better writer? Write every day. A better coder? Code every day. It is not possible to know everything about everything, but embracing that possibility opens up doors to learning abilities that you didn't know you had. Fifth, ferociously apply what you learn. We suddenly gain the superpower of being able to go into a new field we've never learned before and quickly make unique contributions. Complex systems, problems and tasks are all around us, but let's face it, today's learners are mostly stick collectors and not master gardeners. They walk around collecting tidbits of knowledge along the way as they go through life without ever being able to put those pieces into proper use. Now, developing a systems mindset is the best way to reverse that process and getting on your way of becoming a master gardener today. It can help you broaden your horizons and tackle not only your assignments, but also real-world problems, improve your decision-making and avoid unintended consequences of your choices. It has the potential to inform your perspectives in all areas of your life for years to come. The possibilities are endless and only limited by your commitment to developing a systems thinking that is appropriate for you. By using the tips and techniques outlined in this module, 
you can unleash your true learning potential and surprise your harshest critic, yourself. You will be able to broaden your horizons by manifold and be rewarded by a lifetime of skill sets and retain knowledge that will last you well beyond your university careers and serve you for the rest of your life simply by investing a bit of time in developing your systems thinking.